Hey guys, Pollock here. Michigan Great Outdoors. This is gonna be a little bit of a, an inside video, so uh, it's hard to see, but I got me a wood stove. My grandfather, he had this old wood stove that he had in his house for many, many years. Uh, probably a 1960s, 1970s stove. Probably weighs about four or 500 pounds. We got it in here and uh, we're gonna do something different today. We are gonna start piping it up. I got some black pipe and then I got some double wall uh, Duravent pipe to go outside. So we're gonna try to get it done today. It's a nice day, it's like 40 outside. And uh, you know, once the season ends, there's not a whole lot open anymore. We got like rabbit, squirrel, small game, coyote, stuff like that. Um, I'm in the barn tinkering. My barn is an absolute disaster right now uh, because of, you know, everything that's going on. Uh, with this wood stove and then I put up a uh, plastic on the, the roof here so a lot of projects going on I still got to get my uh, my canoe finished here get it all ready for uh, the springtime so we go fishing so let's get stuck in it's very important when installing a wood stove to look up all local codes and ordinances in your township your city or wherever you live in and make sure that you're following the rules and the minimum clearances for your stove so I have my minimum clearances met here as well as on my back side as well as on this side so you do lose some space but it's very important to maintain those minimum clearances so you can feel confident if you have to run out go to the store if you have to you know, go to bed for the night and you still have a fire going that you're not going to burn your barn down or something silly like that. So please, you know, if you're going to do this project, please look into the local codes, the ordinances, and make sure that you're following um, all of the requirements of your township or state. So here's the wood stove. It's, it's a big one. It's heavy. Um, I'm excited to to get it fired up because I think it's going to put off a lot of heat. Um, we, so we got black pipe going up and then we're going to have to cut a hole and go through with the triple wall pipe. And then that noise in the background is uh, we got this Remington uh, forced air kerosene heater that works really well. We got a pipe up, I got an elbow, and then we're going to go through uh, in between those two where those above those birdhouses we're going to we're going to go right there at my last uh home that i lived in i had a wood stove and i i put i installed it and for this black pipe really all you need is put it together and you can just get away with putting in some uh, zip screws so i got a whole bag of them uh they're galvanized doesn't matter but you know they're they're not very long anyway um i used to try to put something on this edge like that Rutland sealer stuff. Um, just never really had any good luck with it. When you put it on and then you have a fire, which is supposed to cure it even more, but it ends up just like stinking real nasty. And then it uh, it ends up stinking real nasty. And then it, it, uh, it just flakes off. So um, we'll see once the stove's installed and uh, we get a fire going, we'll see if we have any leaks. Um, if we have a good draft, we shouldn't have a problem. So. But it's something we can add at the end. If we need to seal the, the seams, we'll do it. If not, we'll just leave it. One of the things that's really important when you do install a wood stove is to put one of these cast iron dampeners in. So it'll be right out, coming out of the stove. So the pipe will sit on here. And then we'll put the dampener up here a little bit so we can control it real easily. But this, this wood stove has dampeners on it. To control air incoming airflow but we want to be able to control you know the flow of air coming out we want to be able to control you know be able to turn it down and if you don't do that you can really lose control of your your wood burning you know consumption I guess um, how much wood you burn and how slow you want it to burn which in turn you know in a wood stove you know I don't know 50% 75%, I don't know what the exact number is, is going out this chimney. All your heat's going out. So if you can take and you can shut this down 
like to about right there just enough for the the smoke to get out and then you know turn it down you can really get this stove hot and in turn you know save wood stuff like that so i saw a pretty good video on youtube that uh the installation of this it's really simple and um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna film doing that but maybe i'll link that video because it was pretty awesome uh it's a very simple way to do it so we got our dampener installed so we can control the flow of air well we're at one of the most crucial steps here we got to make sure that our pipe is level and then we got to make sure that we cut the hole in the right spot um Left to right's not a big deal because I have some room where I can I can wiggle the stove left or right, but up or down has to be pretty critical. I want that triple wall thimble up there to be level with my pipe. Um, so we're gonna have to really be careful here and make sure we mark it and cut it in the right spot. If not, then I'll have to start modifying the black pipe. Um, you know, cutting cutting it down lower or having to add a, a larger piece to uh, make up for that mistake. So I'm going to try not to do that. So we're going to be real careful. As I got my, my pipe that's going to go through the wall, and I'm going to make a template out of cardboard. That way when I get it up there, I can make sure I get it in the right spot. I'll know exactly where the hole is, and then we'll cut it out. All right, so we're up here. Uh, we marked where we're gonna cut through. I took my template and I I took a mark off the top of this black pipe with a level and I marked this spot here and I cut a little hole in our template so we can line it up. And you can see the this ring here is where the, the black pipe uh, is centered uh, because the, the triple wall is much bigger. If anything, we should probably cut it a little, maybe a hair low. Because like I said, we have, uh, you know, left and right, this, you know, this way we can, we can move some, but we want to make sure our elevation is correct. If not, then that'll be a lot more pain in the butt work. So now I got to figure out how I'm going to cut this big hole. We skipped a little bit ahead and uh, I had to kind of adjust and put the hole a little lower. I had to run the Menards, uh, that piece, that black pipe piece. Um, so that's goes into the super vent and then, then you can connect it to the black pipe. I didn't have that piece. So I had to run to Menards and grab it. Subsequently, when I did that, it lowered, uh, I'm, I'm now lower and you can see that I'm pretty close there to the wood. Um, but that's, I'm not worried about that. I'll, I'm going to take this shelf out and, uh, I'll, re I'll reposition that wood, um, lower. So I'm not worried about that. I'll fix it. Um, but our hole turned out okay. It's not the best. There's a little bigger gap than I'd like um, But we're gonna flash that up and then I'll cover that with uh, some high temp uh, aluminum tape, so it'll be airtight and we'll be good to go. So We'll take a view on the other side So on this side you can see the the pipe coming out of the side of the barn So it's pretty caught, you know high up to the roof there, so we won't have to go too much further up hopefully hopefully save a little bit of pipe maybe we can return some of our sections now that we have our pipe going out the side of the barn it's time to uh, put together the support for the stack for the stove pipe that our our T will sit on our super vent T so you can see it's double wall so inside here it's it's hollow and uh i've had these in the past you know you when you touch them when the fire's going you can't you can't even feel it they're really really great so it'll be good for our draft so we gotta have a good draft flow but we're gonna uh put together the support now we're just mocking it up so we have the t sitting on the support plate and then there's a 12 uh inch with uh on the bottom it's got a clean out so that piece right there will actually uh is my clean out so i can clean the whole stack this is a waste because that's expensive and it's basically used for nothing other than to make the clean out. They should sell something much shorter than that, like a six inch piece or something. So 
so far I would complain about that but uh, everything else has been pretty good so everything's gone snapped together well uh, you can see the stack there looking good on the stove nice and level putting together the stack support they got these kind of small bolts here I added a lock washer um, just I like lock washers I don't like stuff coming loose so a little added security there you know from the hopefully hopefully there's not too much rattle on this thing but there could be potentially with the wind so I, I, I just like the, the lock washers so uh, lock washers help keep things tight little pro tip all right so we got the support in the T we're gonna start plumbing in the rest of the pieces uh, I went with 3 8 bolts I had because I believe in overkill and everything so this thing is solid as a rock we'll put some uh, bolts in here later uh, but I want to get this pipe on so I can uh, light a fire so here is the, uh, the the bolts that I ran through for the support so you can see uh, it actually worked out perfectly with uh, the location of this 2x6 and that support bracket so uh, right here uh, I got a 2 inch minimum I have to uh, to be for code so I'll take my forstner bit and, or something I'll, I'll round this wood out a little bit so we're up to code so I don't have to take much off but uh, I'm gonna put on the two pieces of chimney and then the cap and then uh, you know maybe the support bracket if I can get it up there and then we're gonna light a fire so here's my final two pieces with the chimney we're gonna install those now and then uh, put up one support bracket and then we're gonna light a fire man look at that chimney Look at that vent cap man that thing looks pretty so on this uh, chimney stack support here I got to modify this um, because the way it's uh, out there right now the way it lines up I can't really effectively bolt it in so we're gonna do a little modification and we'll show you what we did outside well, we got our support on so I had to uh, cut it in half to get it to go around um, because it doesn't fit perfectly with I got some clearance issues up here so but we ended up cutting it and it worked out good and then uh, we made sure we were level so we're pretty close there maybe just a hair off but we can adjust that and then I got a I think I need a longer piece here this is 24 inch I need a 36 to complete the pipe because I don't think I'm going to be to code if I don't uh, get a longer one. So back to Menards. Uh oh. Looks like they're all out. Oh, but it's up there. I guess we're climbing up. Good old Menards. Alright, we got what we need. So let's keep this bad boy rolling. Better get out of here before I spend any more money. Menards. You guys shop at Menards? It's a pretty cool place. I almost find myself liking it more than uh, Home Depot or Lowe's anymore. I'm walking past my truck. Better pay attention. Alright, we're gonna get home and we're gonna put this other piece on there and light a fire. All plumbed in. The outside's done. I'll probably add uh, a hanger right there. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, another hanger there, but that thing it, it's rock solid. It's really, really a good kit. I'll probably add uh, two more bolts on each side. I'll do that tomorrow. She's alive. A little test fire going. She's cooking. She's burning pretty hot too. Over 500, that's good. This pipe's real hot too. Um, I'm really hoping that this thing's going to put out enough heat to uh, 
heat this barn. So uh, the triple wall up there, I put. You can put your hand on it. It's not even, not even hot. I don't know if you can see in the video, but some of that that black paint shit starting to melt off. It's kind of burning off. So there was a little bit of smoke coming from that, but it's not from uh, any leaks. I haven't saw a leak yet, so. Well, first impressions, I'm really pumped about how this thing's going. I mean, look at what we got going here. That thing makes some heat. The nice thing too is the pipe is not getting too hot. So it was, it was a little smoky in here from all that, uh, I don't know if you can see the smoke. I got the fan going. But it got pretty smoky in here from that black pipe burning off and it was stinking pretty bad. But we are making heat now, man. This is great. Look at that beautiful fire. I got both dampers turned down. But these dampers are so responsive. Hey, look at that. Immediately. And then we can shut them back down. And that fire will just slowly simmer down. Burn slow. That's what we want to see. Who doesn't love a wood stove? Gosh, man. Wood stoves just make me so happy. So filled with joy right now. It's insane. You know, uh, the the seasons have dwindled. Deer hunting's over. Uh, we're into small game. I got a million things I need to do around the house. So today we, uh, we decided to get this little old wood stove fired up. So we had to pipe it in and uh, make sure everything was up to code. It's burning good, man. It's nice and warm right now. It's like 38 degrees outside. And in here it's about 50, which is good enough. I mean, all I really want is to be able to come out here in the barn and do a little work on some stuff. So I got me a cold beer and uh, the satisfaction of doing something by hand, all by yourself. And uh, I got a little bit of it on film, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoy it. I didn't get nitty gritty detailed because it's just too hard to try to film and and put up this whole pipe system and then vent it outside all by yourself but uh you know maybe if you guys uh you know ever want to put a wood stove in your shed or garage or barn i mean it's really not that hard to do it's it's pretty simple and uh i went to menards and i got the um super vent they call it and it it just twist locks together it's amazing you know in here i use the black pipe so i can kind of radiate some heat inside but that super vent was incredible. So, so we're uh, we got a fire going right now on the actual wood stove. We're burning at 550 degrees. This pipe's about 400 degrees. I can't even barely touch it. And this is like 60 degrees. This double wall. Um, it's amazing how good this thing works. There's no heat right here. I can't feel anything. On the pipe, there's a little bit. This side is obviously going to be hotter because heat rises. So as it's going through the pipe, you know, most of the heat is on the top. Um, so what we're using here is just some of this aluminum, uh, this aluminum tape I got at Menards just to seal the hole. And then I have some high temp silicone that I'm going to seal it on the other side. But once this, once this uh, tape here is on and uh, I put the silicone, I mean, I'm done with this project, so I'll have it all sealed up. And then I just have to continue putting up my insulation. So I did plastic insulation. Well, it's not an insulation. It's just a, a barrier to keep the heat down. And then I have that, uh, it's probably hard to see, but I have a three-quarter inch thick uh, foam board insulation. I'm just going to put that all the way around. And then I'm going to... Um, plastic in the walls and then eventually I'll put in you know wood studs and 
you know insulation in the walls but that's not really in the budget this year so we're just going to go with the whole plastic in the ceiling and then we'll try to get the foam board up because i have most of it to do the job and then this project's done so so one thing i wanted to mention um this black pipe stuff here it just slides together um so i bought this uh little reducer collar uh, from menards and then i bought these a large section of six inch black pipe and it all just slides together and then i use the zip screws to tie it in just to make it solid so you can see as well up there um that's not a standard size i actually had to cut that down to make it to fit and then um another thing i didn't really capture in the video and it's hard to see but there's these clamps right here um so when you buy when you go to menards and you get your black pipe you get your little piece to connect the black pipe into the the super vent they have those clamps that really hold it all solid together so i i'd really advise you to get those those clamps because it really makes life a lot easier it makes everything i mean this this thing is solid as a rock so definitely want to get those clamps and then you can see up top um I ended up putting that aluminum foil tape and it really works well. There's not hardly any heat on that wood at all, but I just gave a little extra protection uh, because I don't have my two inch uh, clearance that I'm supposed to have for code, but I'm not concerned about it at all. Um, it doesn't get hot right there. And then I put a little bit of the, the tape there to reflect any heat that would come, but you could stick the back of your palm. A good test is to take, um, the back of your hand it's real tender right there so you can you can test for heat um, so if I do it up top there I can I can sit there and hold the back of my hand uh, on that that pipe because it just really doesn't get hot one thing I added and it's very important to have is one of these uh, stove and chimney thermometers so um, you put it on there and when you're having your fire It'll tell you right where your heat is. So it says right there, danger creosote. So when you have a low, you know, not very hot, smoky fire, you're going to build creosote. You want to be in the safety zone. And then obviously you can get too hot as well. And that's really bad for the pipe. Um, the stove, I'm not 100% sure what the stove is rated for as far as heat goes. Um, I've had it up to about 750, which I think is at the upper level of really what you want it to be at. Um I think anything higher than that's probably not good for the welds and, and maybe the glass. But you definitely don't want to have your pipe that hot. You want to maintain your pipe in that 250 to you know 450, 475 range. If you don't, that could uh, obviously be detrimental to your wood stove. Um, if the if the nice thing about this stove is that if I get too hot up here, it's probably because my dampeners are wide open. So I have those dampeners at the bottom here. I have my damper controls down here. So if I have those dampers wide open, that that chimney pipe will get real hot. So if that's occurring, you know, normally I can hear it. You you can hear the way it sounds, the way the fire's burning. And I'll just, I'll turn those dampeners down, down here. And in doing that, by turning the dampeners down, if we're up here for our chimney temp, it'll slowly start coming back down on the safety zone. Well, there it is. Wood stove, all done. Actually, I gotta put, I gotta add a hanger uh, right there. Just to stiffen it up a little bit. But uh, we're to code. It works great. It's on right now, actually, but it's burning so efficiently, there's no smoke. So it's a really good wood stove I got from my grandfather. And it's 63 degrees in the barn right now, but it's kind of warm out here. It's probably 40 outside, but it's really nice for doing projects, and it's going to really pay for itself in the long run. I won't have to purchase kerosene anymore. Nothing like having a wood stove to keep you warm while you're working in the barn on projects. It's 63 degrees in this barn right now, and I have the door open, so... I have access to tons of wood. For me, this is perfect. So I highly suggest investing or getting a wood stove. That's such a beautiful sight.